Um, here's another one you don't see every day. You hear about airplane and car hijackings and you watch action movies, but how about product? So um, a distributor that uh, was one of my client's exclusives in China decided to sell her company. And she did an okay job. The buyer, the new distributor, took it and she left the country. He decided to stiff her. Uh, he said, you know, I'm not going to pay the, you know, we have a contract, I bought your company, but I'm not going to pay half of it. So anyway, he started running his business as usual, orders a whole bunch of product, a couple million RMB worth, arrives in the port of Tianjin, and all of a sudden it disappears in customs. And then the next day he goes down to his warehouse, and it's locked. So he has someone break the lock, he goes in, and that's empty. He has his e-commerce team try to sign into Tmall store, he's blocked out. The old distributor locked him out using her relationships, held the product for ransom, forced him to pay her not just the value of what he owed, but add another million. It crushed my client's business for six months. And this is the risk you run when you offer exclusivity to people in China without clauses to get it back. Um, poisonous agendas. I know you all are in business and you know what a competing agenda is. It's when people in the room all have different ideas of what's going to happen in the relationship. Unfortunately, sometimes in China, it can get ugly. So this is a current case that I am actually actively transferring over to us as an operator. And the backpack brand, they're really good people. They're very successful. They let someone in their Shanghai office said, hey, I'll find you the best you know, operator for backpacks. Don't worry about it. He didn't do that. Instead, he didn't run a process, didn't take it back to his boss. Instead, he went and chose a distributor that he could get into coots with and make a commission on the side. And he offered them in Chinese, his boss couldn't read it, Australian, a contract that gives them perpetual rights to Team on JD. So it's taken nine months, lots of lawyers, a lot of expense, and the stuff's coming back, but they had to buy it back. And it was very expensive. Um, here's something you really don't see every day. Okay, so um, my client's a skincare brand from New Zealand. They came to us, and I, actually I couldn't help them because this situation is untenable. And it's probably the worst case you'd ever see. Um, they hired a head of international based in Auckland who didn't know anything about China, but said she did. And they were looking for a partner. Now, they were fortunate enough to be one of those brands that's uh, excuse me, that is activated by accident in China. So she had a very successful business cross-border, and she wanted to legitimize it and put it through author authorized distribution. So a guy came to them and convinced them that he was a TP or whatever the case may be, they gave him, this woman gave him a five-year exclusive. About a year into the relationship, he was very hostile, and they didn't know what was going on, and they found out that he was actually an arms dealer. The man manufactured dangerous weapons and sold them to Kazakhstan, okay? This is not a nice human being. And so they are stuck in this contract into perpetuity, right, unless he decides to give it up. Uh, last happened about six months ago. Even when you're successful, things can happen. So my client... Uh, we had a very high-profile launch for 11.11. It went super well. But then we're taking market share from people in this category. And um, immediately, one of the key competitors was very clever. They launched an attack, hired a third party to start creating fake orders. So about a third of the orders per day were fake to try to hurt our ranking system. So Timo has a seven-day unlimited right of return. And we've heard from Al today with his fantastic platform about the need to return merchandise. In China, people use that against you. Okay, so what he calls bracketers, we call fraud sometimes. And so in this case, this group hired a third party to do this damage. Now we've gotten that under control. They also called the government bureaus, got them aggressively audited. That cost them a million RMB. And then last, they hired some thugs to go squat in the showroom. So we ended up getting them out of the situation. It took about three months. But things are fine, and it's all back to normal, and everything's great. Um, and I'm sharing all this weird stuff because I want to ask you a question. Are you really ready for China? Um, and um, I'm going to tell you how you know if you're ready, okay? This is how you know.